And here we go with week number seven of the KCM 2024 season three. I'm really excited to show you guys the brand new map pool as we get started here. Soul Key versus Noob for game number one. Let's go. Here is the lineup. Sharp Royal Barracks best. Noob. Queen Soul Key action. Yes, we are missing a Protoss player today. Yeah, that is uh, interesting to say the least. The KCM this season is just full of surprises. Yeah, totally. Um, I don't know what's going on over there in the Protoss squad or... Uh, what's happening like if there's a conflict of uh, schedules or something but you know we've got these amazing lineups for both the other two squads what happened to Protoss I really don't know yeah I mean it looks like they just like ran out of professional players and just brought out their best new button you know yeah and I imagine Snow I, I thought that he would be back this week but maybe that uh, disappointment still uh, hurting him from week number six it was such a fun week but uh, it's such a painful week, I think, for Snow. Yeah, I mean, it's very. It was a bittersweet for sure. Like you, you had that great performance. That games one and two were absolutely insane. I've never seen games that like get traded down and grinded down to like a nub in that way, quite in such a spectacular fashion as we saw. And he went on such a great run, but then kind of got his spirits crushed in the end. And recently, I saw him have not too good of a run against Flash on the ladder as well. They played two games on the ladder, uh, Snow losing both, and then they played some customs after that, and Snow lost every single game after that. And he was just hands in his face, just looking devastated and very unlike himself for a good like 20, 30 minutes before he even like managed to queue up for ladder again. <laughs> I mean, I imagine the exact same scene after watching his teammates throw on uh, Troy in the finals of KSCM. The money just slipping through his fingers after putting up such a great performance. Uh, must have been heart-wrenching in both cases, but he's not going to be here today. Instead, we've got Noob in the lineup, and uh, Solki is actually opening with a 9-pool. He uh, extractor tricked out an extra drone. And he will be sending six links across the map. So let's see if Noob's prepared for this. I mean, this is only really like hard shut down by like Forge expand into like, you know, having two cannons on time or your cannon and some probes, probes blocking on time. Like, this is not, not the, the dumbest thing to go for for Sulky. It's like it's safe against any kind of early shenanigans and it also allows you to put on some pressure. And then with the gateway first, like it does kind of force Noob to be very passive, at least initially. To worry about this because he doesn't want to let these links get into his main at all that's right and he's going to be pulling quite a few probes he's not taking the standard measure oh he loses one of the probes Ooh. already that is rough he's not taking the standard measure which is one zealot on the ramp with a probe and then the other uh, zealot out here fighting and that might come to bite him in the back oh he's gonna actually turn around i thought that sulky was gonna make a run for it there but he uh takes a look at the probes on the ramp and decides that noob has held well enough now there's a zealot on the ramp probe on the other side of the yeah. map gets cleared and now two zealots here should be able to stop this yeah i mean like this is a nice little opening gambit from sulky it's nothing too serious it's just getting one single probe kill is great compensation for going for these early links and he's just going to be applying pressure to noob and trying to slow down the timings just a little bit but we're probably not going to see anything too crazy i don't imagine that we're going to see sulky hard commit to this but I, it's still possible he could just ling flood at any moment if he so choose. that's right well, with three Zealots out now, it's Noob's turn to put on the pressure a little bit. This is a lot of links, but it's not enough to handily beat this. Unless he gets a great surround, he gets a pretty decent one on that first Zealot, but doesn't take many hit points off of that. It will regenerate in shields here slowly over time as Noob tries to push across. He actually will follow the links as they come back. Cannot allow these links to jump on top of the pylon. That could be really, really painful. And even just getting some damage done on that gateway can, can spell disaster later on. Eventually, you can just blow the wall up. Maybe before the cannons are warping in with a big ling flood. And uh, Pros won't be able to do much uh, about that. Uh, right now, though, he looks like he's not really committed to any transitions in his tech just yet. I'm curious to see if we see that lair started now. He has the resource to do so, but I doubt he'll be going for that. He's much more likely to get link speed um, and get just some zerglings right now. 
Yeah, it's three Zealot make their way into the main base. They are going to take a trade here against these links. Oh my god, is the gateway actually going to fall? He's targeting it. He gets it. He could run by into the main as well. That is huge. Getting the full scout. Potential for probe damage here in the main and the gateway kill. At least the Cybernetics course started here for Noob. Yeah, and we do see that Lair on the way. I'm not sure if he went link speed into um, Lair or the other way around, but... Yeah, with the two links in the main, it can be very annoying if he's on top of his multitask and you can kill quite a few probes. And if, if Noob is, on, you know, inversely not so on top of his task switching, yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. Like, even just the psychological games of like having to flick back and forth while you're losing your probes and you're losing a bit of mining time and, you know, just it, trying to clear everything up while Zerg is just now able to like start throwing out as many units or drones as they want. He's got three hatcheries online. He can start to saturate the third base. Um, he could even just choose to like play completely macro from this point onwards and have, still have a little bit of an edge to work with definitely has an edge at this point sulky starts his spire he's continuing to keep these lings alive in the main and look for damage on these probes so far noob's done a pretty good job of tracking those and making sure that they don't kill any probes but eventually you're gonna slip and soul key will never slip with these links he's gonna continue to move them he does get a probe there so a little bit of a slip up by noob and soul key continues to control this base yeah, I mean, Sulky's not far from, like, um, the supply count either. Like, usually you'd see Protoss with a tiny bit more of a, 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 a bit of a canyon here starting to grow, and as the gateways came online later, there'd be an even bigger of a gap. But right now, the gap is, like, almost non-existent. You've been picking up these probes, like, here at time. Look at this, these supplies even. This is kind of like, yeah, seeming to seem like Sulky's early early game advantage is slightly snowballing, killing additional probes with those first two links and maybe three kills on that circling is insane. He's done so much damage here just with these two links in the main. Um, plus, I mean, killing the early gateway and slipping by was a fantastic move. Oh, is he going to get this last one? One more attack? No, not quite able to get it. Um, back at home though, Soul Key, you know, after killing that gateway, he's just been able to drone uh, absolutely non-stop. He's got enough links he knows to handle just one gateway's worth of production uh, at the front as after it finished. I mean, it takes a long time to incre increment out these zealots enough to actually fight the links that were made to deal with the counterattack from Noob earlier. Oh, is he going to get the surround on this? This is huge. Getting another zealot here before plus one or speed comes in. That's going to drastically... Uh, lower the actual damage potential of this move out that's coming soon. Oh, and he loses his Corsair to oh, wow. Dude, Noob is getting completely slapped here. Soul Key being sent out first actually turns out to be a great idea for the Zerg lineup. It's actually kind of insane saying thinking about it like soul key's like really dismantling noob right now and um i'm quite impressed by his gameplay um yeah get, um being a, i think i think one critical factor actually breaking choosing to break open the gateway wall really cut into the zealot production for enough time that like there was really not much window for noob to kind of reinsert himself into this game and i think his mid-game timings would just be so ruined now as a result and he can't even really produce a uh, corset safely and as a result we may just see an ogre's oak play from sulky where he chooses to make you know a, a small fleet of uh scourge and quite a lot of mutas to come in there and maybe just bowl new over potentially that is a possibility although we only have two gases at the moment It'll be a little bit difficult to pump out the required number of mutas and a uh, scourge to make that happen but a uh, sulky could easily uh, add on those resources so far though just pumping out hydra is he actually going to go and try to bust this end this game early he's denied noob map vision for so long noob might expect you know one regular mass hydra play off of six hatch do we actually have six hatches already dude sulky is so good at macro yeah. i wouldn't put it past him he's been able to you know put on so much pressure with the lings kill the gateway get in there deal a bunch of damage and still get uh you know layer spire out and now he's got hydras coming into the front this dt is actually saving the day right now though yeah it's gonna buy more of the time um i don't think sulky even has overall yeah he doesn't have overall speed yet it's gonna be some time before he can like try and bait that dt into that overlord maybe he might oh! get it now actually okay now he catches it so now he can just go okay and overall speed is finished up as well so this is a critical timing i'm not i think storm should just barely be done right now but there's only one high temple that i can see there's two okay but it's still not going to be the greatest of timings of here for noob to to, um, to be able to defend this i think he's still not got his um, energy or storm just yet finished up just a few more precious seconds only one cannon is 
just finished in that line a few going up but all this sim city of the protoss is now being used against him as he can't get his else out to get surface area against he's finally the storm comes out gets a pretty good one taking about five of the hydralisks there another good storm but i mean there's no more storm banked up so what you see is what you get if sulky can come in here maybe even pick off the forge there's not going to be a lot to stop him i don't think no i think he will get the forge for sure um the cannon placement turned out to be pretty good from noob it was very hard for sulky to get in close enough to start to hit those with zealots blocking the uh, the little corners there blocking the the entrances into the base uh but yeah absolutely should be able to kill this now is it in time to stop the upgrade uh the upgrade just stopped right now did he cancel or did he get it he got it so that's actually pretty important noob gets the upgrade and he holds on against this hydralisk attack it's not an all-in though sulky hit this after he got six hatches and a really good economy he can add on a few more drones take a fourth base and be completely fine yeah um uh did he get it or did he did he, was he researching plus well armor after that i, I can't remember the timings of when he got the uh, the initial upgrade I'm not sure about that. We've got two more forges spinning here in the main base. That's going to be plus two attack and plus one armor. Plus one attack is done here for Soul Key. And he's just going to back away, set up a soft contain at the front of Noob Space, and try to pick off any Templar if a move out does uh, happen here. Oh, Dark Archon Ooh. added on. Noob expecting a yeah. switch into. Uh, Mutalist tech here. Do you think that's what Sulky might be planning? I mean, I think that's what Sulky's representing, and I think that, yeah, I think I think we're gonna we're gonna be seeing it, yeah, oh. for sure. <laughs> we see quite a few moves be made right now. I mean, that's certainly what um, Sulky was definitely trying to represent. Whether or not he was definitely going for that, it, it does very. The, the stars are seeming to align for that, and he does indeed um, want to be committing into at least a small enough force of Mews to put on some pressure. There's only like two Corsairs finished right now, but the two cannons in the main will be able to buy a little bit of time here with the aid of this Corsair. One was already low, so only that one single Scourge was actually able to pick it off. So it's actually a breakable position now for Sulky. One Corsair, one cannon won't be enough to stop those six Mews. So it's a a little bit frustrating honestly for noob like he's, he wants to make, make an archon now he has got this dark archon waiting but he's gonna be baiting out storms and putting on a lot of pressure lost mining time getting some of these high like, of sniped off like nothing is gonna be good for noob even if he does somehow clean this up and deals with this he's already lost way too much these initial six mirrors this is a back-breaking loss right now for noob he is getting absolutely dismantled by soul key in game number one and the protoss squad is not looking very healthy this week Shun. I can't believe the they were sent. I can't believe they were sent out first <laughs> to go. I mean, <laughs> I, I believe that the the thought process is you know whoever wins last week uh, will uh, go you know have the the third spot, so they will be able to you know miss the first game. Um, oh my God, that is a huge, huge wow. maelstrom, and that storm is insanely good. Every single meter probably going to go down here. These are so, so low. Will he get one more Templar for his time, though? I mean, they've already done so much damage. He can, certainly shouldn't. Okay, he does get that one last kill. Pretty good for Soul Key, regardless of that huge Maelstrom. Yeah, I mean, he's actually still about even on supply with Nu, about 13 minutes, which is very indicative of a strong Zerg lead. So, yeah, well, it's not going to be good either way. Like, we, we'd have to see some miracles here for Noob to kind of claw his way back in this game. We need to see, like, you know, brilliant storms, Soggy kind of messing up his positioning of the Hydras a little bit. But yeah, um, it, it, at the moment, Sulky will not allow Noob to gain a critical mass of goons to break out. He's just going to be like skirmishing, uh, baiting out storms, microing back, picking off goons here and there, and just keeping this force of Noob small enough that he can continue to engage it. We do see the plus two upgrades on the high just finished now. One, one, one on these um, Protoss units. So he's gone for the shield upgrades to help give the, the Archons a bit more meat as well. But uh, ah, beautiful storm at the northern flank. So many high just getting absolutely blanketed in it. But it doesn't matter. There's not enough juice in the tank and high. Uh, Soki just going to press the issue forward and yeah, like I said, just skirmish of the Protoss, bait out the storms, go in, pick off the units and keep the army small enough, keep the head of the dragon not too big so that you can just cut it off later. Oh my goodness, this fourth base is completely saturated already for Soki. So somewhere in between making those mutas and making this massive Hydralisk army, he managed to sneak out a big group of drones and saturate that. It's just to my protoss or my, my zerg brain it just doesn't even make sense how he managed to do all this at the same time but he's 
absolutely forced himself into an amazing position here. Soul Key going to surround this army. It's tucked into a very tight corner. This is exactly what he was waiting for, what he was looking for. Nor no more storm available here, and these dragoons are going to get completely destroyed. Yeah, I mean, Noob just doesn't have enough gas to work with. I mean, not just the gas in his resources, but literally the gas in his own, like, humane body that's just not able to keep up with the godlike macro or soul key it really does feel like you're watching like a mortal try and fight at least a demigod or something like it's just the absolute scales of, it, of balance are just completely off from for um new from the start of this game so he's been in complete dominant control from the start and you have to kind of wonder what is going on in the pros dugout to even be in the situation gg finally called not too much of a surprise i have to say but a uh, really great performance from Stalky, nonetheless, kind of giving a bit of a masterclass in uh, how to get, con get control of the pace of the game in ZVP and clutch out the win. Okay, no real surprise there. Noob goes out first. We didn't even get a chance to talk about the map, Shun. Uh, that was Deja Vu. Kind of a normal-ish map with some interesting little twists, but this map that we're looking at right now, Kickback, is pretty insane. Yeah, it is pretty wild. So let's just kick back to some kickback saying and talk a little bit about it. It's kind of got that like sort of like Colosseum vibe with this neutral sunken in the choke point that only really like spawns creep in for the Zerg players so they can uh, creep up their choke while taking these expansions. So it does like to be defensive while also being a bit greedy. So very strong uh, um, Zerg macro builds on this map. We may see a crazy Zerg out of Sulky as, as a result. Um, well, in verse, he looks like he just wants to wall in, but yeah, what do you, what do you think about this map saying? Because it is pretty well. Well, I think it's pretty crazy that we can grab three gases on one base yeah. as Zerg, but uh, there is that mitigating factor that uh, the gas geysers only have 3,000, I believe it is, gas in each of them, so okay. uh, quite a bit less gas for the Zerg to work with. It's like a, a large um influx but then it drops off significantly uh, before it would regularly you know 21 minutes is when we think about the natural usually running out uh for the zerg player um but here it's going to happen a lot quicker it's roughly like 18 minutes of mining and usually you're getting your gas about you know two three minutes into the game kind of right. thing or whatever so yeah about 18 minutes worth so instead you've got like just 10 minutes of gas in the tank to work with you get 300 gas a minute it's 100 gas per drone with three mining you basically get three just under 300 a minute depending on the how optimal the gas placement is that's right and we're gonna actually have a gas opener here you were talking about this um when we were discussing kickback before that uh, probably Terran players are going to have to do some teched out things uh, to try and prevent Zergs from just going into something like pure uh, crazy right. Zerg on three gas or, you know, just hiding bases around the map because there are so many different bases that you can take on this map with gas. Oh, uh, absolutely. You, you have to do um, something. So we might see like, you know, lotto drop ships. We might see, uh, you know, fast uh, mech switch or even just straight into mines, not necessarily a mech switch, but, you know, just getting mines early on from mm. the bio initial play and what have you. And yeah, we might see um, uh, bio mech builds where you're, you know, making like two or three factories worth of tanks with your bio force all kinds of craziness because uh yeah you don't want to just let the zerg get away with uh murder here because if you do just let the zerg sit back and macro up on these three gases i mean sky's the limit for uh sulky here and he is a very strong macro player i really highly doubt royal has the game plan of uh you know letting sulky do what he wants on this map no absolutely not he's gonna want to get in here and deal some damage early on we've got double factory oh, all right a map play. there we go yeah so yeah, I yeah think. this makes sense on three on this map you can get those three gases yourself um if it, you, if you are going for something way stronger than what the zerg player can push out uh on three gases then you don't really mind if the zerg just gets those easy three bases because you're gonna have a way better army 
Yeah, a mech is just so strong that, you know, three base Terran can handle five base Zerg. You know, it's like ridiculous how strong Terran mech is against Zerg. If you know how to play it and, you know, the map geometry kind of allows for it. There's certain maps where mech is just very challenging to play on. You can pretty much play mech on most maps. It's just that certain maps can make it a little bit trickier to execute. But this map is actually really picture perfect to play mech on. Having this uh, easy to take third base, not having to worry about that. Uh, a lot of the problems with uh, Terran mech can be uh, stemming from your early um, decision making and when you move out with your army. So you move out onto the map with your Goliaths just as he backstabs you or what have you and you kind of get abused in terms of mobility early on and you just can't get the third base up online and that kind of thing. Uh, this this map, not so much. Like um, Much easier to score his third base for Royal. So he's going to be really comfortable just putting on the pressure here to Soul Key as well. And uh, I think... Um, this might be actually maybe slightly royal favored actually like, I'm, I'm kind of liking royal's chances more than sulky thinking about it you know what i think royal's doing he's getting speed he's gonna have four vultures coming out yeah. here he's pushing back the one single link with the marines here to try and hide this play yeah sulky has no idea this is gonna be a massive oh. run by just two sunken colonies here at the front. The spire is not done. Unlikely that we have a uh, burrow here. And he's just going to go for the run by right now. Lynx are getting in the way. Nice. He picks off one, but three vultures in the main is a disaster scenario. Yeah, but you can three shot drones. I mean, you, sh uh, you can two shot them if the fragmentation grenades um, they land at the same time. But with three, like, you've got a lot of damage output. And he's going to potentially kill quite a lot of Sulky's economy. And he doesn't have to kill much. He just has to put a dent into him. Ah. And he's gotten in. He's gotten in. Sulky could have easily body blocked that with some more drones being a bit more tactically position but now Royce can have a field day he knows there's a few more precious seconds before the sunken finishes up he's going to get a lot of damage with these fragmentation grenades on those vultures just before it does so but yeah and he, the re reason why he did put his um dr vultures behind the middle is because he knows there's muters popping out guys so he has to try and kill the drones now before the muters just clean up for free uh, final vulture gets clean but the damage that's been done already is putting Royal into such a nice spot. This three base mech play is looking better and better, Shun. It's like, how, how do you even get in here and deal any damage? He will have Goliaths. He doesn't have any turrets is the one thing that's a little bit worrying, but um, yeah. as the Goliaths start to increment out here and the uh, Karen Booster upgrade finishes, I don't know if Sulky will be able to deal uh, you know, too much damage here in the main. He's even going to fly in, take a bunch of damage, and then fly out. This is not a great well, start for Sulky. Yeah, as we can see, he's not really mining optimally right now. Like, he has two gases, and he has, like, no one on gas right now, because he's just trying to stabilize his economy from that devastating Vulture speed run by. I mean, inversely, we don't see a second base yet for Royal, but that's not too much of an issue. As long as he can prevent Sulky having the resources available to get a critical mass of muters, he can't actually come in here and finish off uh, Royal. If this wasn't the case, if, say, a few drones weren't killed or disrupted in their mining just now, Sulky could have easily just gone all in to etch muter and just finished off Royal, because he only has two factory worth of production and no turrets so yeah at the moment like royal just kind of like dancing with death mate just barely got the damage done that he needed to and now won't be able to be punished so easily and just going to re-secure this natural while sulky takes his thirds we may see a much more methodical slower paced game from this point onwards i think this is massive giga brain from royal uh the fact that he yeah. didn't build any turrets here uh, he knows sulky so. and his style and he knows that like a lot of Zerg players, if they take that damage from Vultures, they will just all in. They will just, you know, put their drones on gas, have, you know, very, very low income and try to just make it work with whatever mutas that they can pop out. Um, not right. the case. Soul Key, uh, he doesn't do that. Uh, and because Royal cuts turrets here, he gets a ma another massive advantage. He's going to have his net... Uh, his second base coming up he hasn't had to build any turrets so his factories are way faster and his expansion is way stronger this is looking really really good for royal yeah really well uh executed opening from him quite impressed and uh, we see borrow out of Soki, so we can you know some use some of these circlings dotted around the map to give him some scouting information maybe if royal does go for some sort of timing attack Soki can sort of punish the mobility of the the terran mech as a result and uh, yeah, I think we now will see a few turrets added on just for a little bit of security, but nothing crazy. I don't think he's going to make that many turrets, maybe like one or two here and there, like one in his natural 
one of his main. But I'm, I'm kind of impressed. Um, and Toki is inversely just going to play wide, which is what you kind of want to do against Mech. He's just going to take a fourth base. He maybe even take a fifth base right now because he knows that the third is going to be coming soon. He's going to come into the natural expansion, though, picking off these two SCVs as they're building the turrets. So has kind of opened up this position a little bit. But all that's really doing for Solki is like buying him some time because he knows now the Goliaths are going to pull back into that natural expansion. There's no way they can push. There's no way they'll be in the main base. And now we can swing all the way around and try and come back into the main base and hopefully catch them out of position yet again yeah it's incumbent on royal to build a few extra turrets just to make sure that the mutilus backstab doesn't kill him or kill too much uh, of his economy uh, so he will build a couple of turrets in each location but you can see he's a little bit slow on that and royal is not stopping he's going across the map he's only got one tank here shun if sulky yeah. builds a lot of sunken colonies behind this and just continues to pick off stuff in Royal's base, there's still a really good opportunity for uh, Sulky to win. I think Royal's kind of botched things here. If he just stayed home and built up a third base and kept on, you know, upgrading, there's almost no way he would have lost this game. But uh, as it stands, he's just going to gamble everything on a big push here, and more Sunkins are coming. Are they going to be in time, though? Sulky is doing so much damage to his base, he has to make this work. Yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, like, there is a chance that Royal can just barely break through this sunken line, but he won't have a lot of forces remaining after the fact, so Sulky can just come back with those mutes in the bottom left now, rejoin with the mutes that he's been macroing up, and he should just barely have enough to crush this force, but he will lose a significant portion of his economy as a result of this, so it's not technically over. We might see a little bit of a scrappy game, depending on how this trade goes. I mean, there's there's a few bruised mutes here if the trades go well and he snipes these low hp muters there's a chance that it could kind of go there's just no i don't think there's any hope of him getting a good enough trade here i think he's lost too many sevs and now and he's not trading off against the muters well enough that yeah there's just no hope for him unfortunately yeah 28 overall supply he can't even really mine off of two bases I and mean, he's got some sevs over here but he's probably gonna have to send them back to the main and just float the cc because these muters are coming he cannot afford to defend everywhere he's got two turrets I don't see any Goliaths. There must be a couple popping out in just a moment, but that yeah. is it. That's all he's got, and Sulki is blisteringly far ahead. He's got four bases with not that many drones, but I mean, how many drones do you actually need as a Zerg player? You've got this many bases. You can mine one drone on each mineral patch and be, uh, you know, insanely productive. GG is called Royal Taps Out in a game which... I think both of us thought was going to be Terran favored after that yep. run by. It was looking fantastic for him, but Soul Key cannot be denied. This man is incredibly good. And if you make one tiny mistake, like leaving your base with not enough turrets at home, he will punish you. And he did so beautifully. Great win there by Soul Key. All right, a pretty cool little game there on kickback, giving us a preview into what this might look like uh, in ASL. But now we've got Best, the last Protoss player in the lineup. Um, a very short lineup for Protoss this week. And <laughs> Best is going to have to do some serious carrying here. Uh, his I backpack mean, is going to be full. Yeah. Best is the last. That's, that is true. And if we had last in the lineup, that, that would be even more ironic. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That would yeah, but I mean, but they, they, they sent, like I said earlier, that they sent out their best noob and now they're left with the best. I mean, they got something to work with. It's not like terrible, right? Well, going up against Soul Key on this map, and I can't even remember the name of this map right now. Let me pull it up as we're getting into this. Minstrel, the name. Kind of a wacky one. We were taking a look at this earlier, Shun. Yeah, Minstrel is probably the second weirdest map in the pool. The, the weirdest being Monty Hall because it's semi island. But um, yeah, like you have so many vectors of attack to this choke point. Like it's it's, a, it's not too wide of a choke point to be fair. It's a little bit wide, but you have like four, almost four vectors of attack to come in to try and challenge this um the choke point in the, the natural here. And it's a little bit peculiar. We may see a kind of rush our best. He looks like he's yeah he's representing it at the very least, and uh, that might force a big response out. So you can't mineral hop over to deal with this. So there there actually isn't really an answer besides trying to take the gas. 
and then hopping the the, the the gas geyser drones but that's really awkward to do you can't really get two drones over quickly with that method so this may be a successful cannon rush we just fake it anyway <laughs> it was just a fake uh sulky kind of guessing that it was going to be a fake doesn't yeah. pull a huge amount of drones and so he won't be slowed down that much best did spend quite a bit of money on that so the lost mining time's not going to hurt too badly and i think this will just be an even trade in the end uh, both players um just testing each other uh, poking each other a little bit and seeing uh, what the response is and everything right. looks good yeah you see a lot of mind games uh, especially amongst players that are familiar with one another and obviously mm. players as big as sulky and best they've played hundreds thousands of games against each other in customs and on the ladder over the years and so you kind of need to do these small weird shenanigan mind games because otherwise players would just have you dialed in too much and would just be able to abuse you at every junction of the game so you do kind of have to have like lots of variations many different like behavior trees that you can do at certain points in the game and you know, he knows that best is capable of doing that that play at that time so he respects it a little bit but not too much that it cripples his economy and that kind of thing that's right now best is just getting into a normal macro game S same goes for sulky he's taking the base at the center left as you can see it's quite a wide open area but there are no really choked up bases on this map just the bottom left corner and the top right corner are kind of choked but there are still two entrances which makes it difficult to right. hold and sulky is going to opt for the more wide open third uh in that center left rather than the more choked up bottom left corner because it is a bit closer yeah i mean uh, in zerg versus prolos it's not as detrimental to have this kind of setup in zerg versus terran obviously presents a lot of issues um because you can't really easily secure that third gas with just like one choke point or one ramp with lurkers or what have you um so it, it, it would be precarious on zerg versus terran but as, as a cvp i think this may be even just a teeny tiny bit zerg favored as long as you choose a correct pathing uh with where you build your expansions and you, you go about it in a smart way i think this might be ever so slightly zerg favored might catch this uh, scouting probe does take it down into hull hit points uh so he's going to want to try and intercept that probe if he can because um scouting information is basically everything in this matchup zerg has the advantage with the scouting until the corsair is coming out in like you know five six minutes so if he does catch this scouting probe it can be very uh, worrying for best he doesn't know if there's going to be you know some kind of craziness coming behind this as a follow-up and uh, might, might need to force him to make cannons as a result and slow down his gateway timings at the very least interesting decisions here from sulky layer finishes and hydralis den starts um yeah i'm not sure what he's planning to go five for hydra. is it gonna be yeah five hatch hydra before storm finishes that could be the yeah. the decision here with uh, overlord speed it allows you to still bust even if all the overlords have been killed over by the natural uh the protoss player can't just defend with a single dt and and hold you off in that case um yeah but it is a sneaky play it's something different and that's what you were talking about earlier is you have to uh, mix in some of these wacky plays to uh, players that you play against all the time to make sure that they're not just able to pigeonhole you and best is sending his courses across the map now but he has not scouted this yet what can Solki do with this early Hydralis then? Um, maybe he yeah. threw it down because he thought that this was going to be too fast, like the, the courses were going to be too fast. Is that the case? Uh, yes and no. Like, I, th I think both things are true. Like, he, he's make, he, he's also getting the tech online faster for these Hydras. Um, he's going to make the, the Hydra den anyway, obviously, to, to defend against the Corsairs. But I think this may be uh, some sort of pressure build from sulky because um he's just going straight into five six hatch hydra and without any kind of commitment into spire does is, is a little bit unorthodox for sulky sulky is the kind of guy to go three hatch layer almost every single time so the fact that he's not doing that is kind of at the very least he's trying to represent to best that that's what he wants to do so maybe he's just trying to force a response out of best to like you know like i was saying earlier making a few additional cannons slowing down the gateway timings and just and then hoping to beat best out on the map with a more battle zerg orientated army uh, after crippling his opening but it remains to be seen we may just be seeing mind games here from sulky i don't know for sure yeah this is this is interesting i'm trying to figure out exactly what's uh 
actually occurred here. I think that maybe best going for the, the cannon rush early, forcing some of the drones off the line. Maybe that was enough to yeah, slow maybe. down the gas because I saw the gas come down at three minutes, right. which is right. slightly too slow to get the course or to, to get the scourge out in time to deal with the Corsair. So maybe this is the right response from Soul Key just based on you know the little bit of a slowdown that occurred at the, that outset of this game. Yeah, I would say that's probably the, the correct conclusion there. I think that's an astute observation. So, and I think that's exactly it. And we, 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 we're we basically seeing the exact same build, but in a variation. He's doing the six hacks Hydra with the Spire. It's just that everything's a little bit later. So he's going into the wider, you know, more more macro hatcheries first before the tech, because he you know, needs to kind of do things a little bit more lopsided because of that um, initial issue. So yeah, I think that's, that's exactly what's happening. Well, now we've got Zealots coming into this third base. The SimCity is not perfect right now. You can see that this is definitely a new map. Uh, Sulky is not quite ready for this, but he's got the drones uh, to try and block, and he will be able to shove everything back. Best just taking a slight trade there, killing off a few Hydras and backing away with the majority of his Zealots still intact. Yeah, and uh, there's not going to see three cannons made from best, so not like a huge investment, but eh, it's kind of like what you need to have at this point, honestly. Like, if you don't have like three cannons or three high templars, you can just straight up die to like a hydra timing here, like a, a, a standard like hydra flood. That's like eight minutes, thirty nine minutes. And honestly, like Soki's been a little bit lazy with his hydra positionings at these expansions, but maybe he's trying to bait in the zealots to come in like this. Like, I, I sometimes do see Zerg players like try to bait the zealots into engagements on expansions just so they can swallow up the zealots rather than just letting them run away for free each time um so yeah he's done a great job of he's, he caught quite a lot of those zealots and one of those corsairs uh supply blocks a little bit but not honestly like sulky's looking pretty fantastic in this game he might just like overwhelm best with a critical mass of hydras soon but this dt is denying this expansion six kills on that dt for the time being and the hydras are moving out of position right now the dt get maybe a couple of the drone kills here going in for the drone kills gets two only two uh, plus the one that was heading down to that fourth base i want to talk quickly about the fourth base on this map because generally in this matchup three bases is pretty easy to grab for the zerg player and then the fourth is like a stretch out onto the map to another corner uh, or something like that to try and grab a far away base that's difficult to hold on this map that fourth base is very close to your third very defendable so Solki is going to move to take that fourth base really, really fast here. He is switching into Mutalist though right now. He's got a big flock coming into the main base and a dropship is heading out on the map. This could get crazy. Yes, yeah, so, uh, there is a second cannon just about to warp into the main base. He's not quite going instantly, so the cannon will finish up. There is two Scourge here to also zone out the Corsair, and he can do a lot of damage. He just needs to kill. Oh! Storm actually killing one single probe and not actually hitting a lot of those muters for long enough. So now these muters can still get a few probe kills on the exit, and that's a pretty significant damage done. And this overlord might just barely see this shot. I think he noticed. I'm not sure. He, the way he reacted and started looking at those top two bases, it seemed like he he knows i'm not 100 percent sure maybe he didn't see it at all actually he's just gonna oh, okay he's aware that there's a dt that's going to be coming in so he is kind of aware of the situation and he has got the hydras coming in so he might lose like three fucking four drones it's still a pretty decent compensation for best honestly like killing four drones but i still would say this is a little bit sulky edged and best is being a bit sneaky hiding his shuttle um and sulky would have expected him to try and run that shuttle back but he's not he's just camping up there at the top maybe he can elevator in another dt or something a little bit later well it's pretty crazy that the shuttle actually survives <laughs> i was not expecting that um soul key just uh, not scanning his base and checking for uh, the presence of that is uh, a little bit disappointing for him i wonder if there's anything in that if there was like a templar in there dude that would get so much value it's kind of crazy um, coming yeah, in once again yeah. to the natural, picking off a few probes here and there. We'll fly through some Dragoon Fire, so almost losing the bulk of these Mutas, but he is opening up the map more and taking fourth base. This is looking pretty good for Soul Key. Third is on the way now for best, but I really like uh, Soul Key if we get to that late game situation. If we get to Mass Ling and Lurker, I feel like he definitely has right. the edge.
Yeah, I, I would agree. Um, Best is a strong player, of course, but Solki is just an absolute monster of a macro player. Um, he, he's just kind of scary, the positions that he can get himself into in the late game stage. And he's pretty good at his task switching as well. Even though he's a macro oriented player, his task switching ability is exceptional. He hasn't got the best micro in the game, but he certainly has got pretty damn good multitasking. And uh, just a couple of lurkers on this uh, bridge. Maybe had to be broken through here by Best. He might try and like crack the armor before it's get gotten uh, too hard, hard here. And he does get one Templar up into the north so we can start like, you know, squeezing in some units and just dumping out the storm on all of these lurkers that are kind of in this like L-shaped kill box here. But it's just too much um, tactical positioning of these Zerg units to come in here, I think. And he, he's not fully aware of just how many Hydras are in position to Pinsir as well. You could just have his whole army swallowed up in an instant if he's not careful. So best wisely just skirmishes at the front and then, you know, waits for more reinforcements to come in. And that's basically how you want to engage uh, but the Zerg at this point in the game is just skirmish, uh, use up your energy, and then go back for reinforcements and rinse and repeat. The bridge, the natural enemy of the Protoss army. This bridge he's coming across right now is going to be very hard to crack. Scourge coming in, going to hit both of these observers. One more is coming. So maybe he can make uh, some progress here with that last observer. Not a lot of forces right here, right now for Solki, but you can bet there is a large mass growing on another part of the map. You can see we've still got 136 supply, nearly even to the Protoss supply, but he just got supply blocked. That's actually kind of important. During this, he's not going to be able to macro. He's only making overlords, so if he continues to bleed off units and he's not able to produce anything more, he might be in a position to actually lose this game. Bess is pushing hard right now, but there are forces coming from every different direction. The uh, storms are running out. The army coming wow. in from the right-hand side is actually going to start to block these Dragoons. They do manage to pick off those Lings and force their way back across the bridge, but that was a little bit scary for Bess. He needs to be careful not to get surrounded. Yeah, I mean, like, I, I can understand best intentions here because um, he is doing a good job of bro he breaking open that position and could put uh, Sulky into a precarious situation where he's just killing units at the rally point. Uh, but Sulky just barely had the critical mass to, you know, pinch of that. And now we're going to see this little tactical four zealot play into the main base. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what he's going to target. Maybe just the, the pool here. Yeah, the pool is going to be the target of choice. Uh, and then that's going to maybe really hiccup Sulky where he's not able to produce um, Zerglings for quite some time and then maybe not get that critical mass that he just had to be able to deal with these like uh, attacks coming in from Best and that might just be the ticket that Best needs to kind of get some control over the state of the game. Ooh, Sulky's being a little bit uh, lax with his overlords. Letting them go down um, in each of these fights is pretty rough for Sulky. Like he's just losing so many that is not really able to continue to just mass up and produce. And Bess yeah. is going to slip in a DT to the main as well. Looks like that's been spotted. So Sulky doing a good job of defending. It's just uh, he is getting a little bit off kilter here. Uh, pushed to the right. edge by Bess. And Bess has secured his fourth base with still a big roaming army. This is not the position we're used to seeing Sulky in. He's usually in... It, pretty strong control of the game at this point and best is going to shove across this bridge once again it's wild but it's actually working yeah it's actually kind of crazy that best is just known for like being able to crack open positions that look like hard to attack into he does this in um terran uh, process of terran as well and uh, he can make those that's he can kind of you know translate those skills transfer them over to this matchup as well with how he engages with his army he does get him into some bad situations sometimes but he's also can get these weird situations where he's in a, a bad spot and then he makes a comeback and just like breaks what looks like a, a tough spot to, to crack and now we see him just come in rolling up to this natural expansion getting on top of the rally point that we talked about earlier and still a lot of these lurkers doubling up from sulky so the storm value is very cost effective for best as well so even though his forces have uh, been diminished quite significantly there is a rally point on the way so he's going to be trying to get in it and pincering this killing these archons before even able to finish it's a little bit frustrating for best just a few more moments and he would have been able to secure that position maybe but it doesn't matter i think i think best has just barely done enough damage to sulky to make this game a lot more playable for him uh, this game is by no means over no no by no means over that's for sure he's still shoving in here 10 kill archon and that back line just killing all the links as they pop out finally a hydra is here to fight but it gets picked off as well 
Lings are dying as they come forward and Bess is actually making progress. He's pushing in. One more lurker pops out. I think we have one observer. 21 kill arc on 23, wow. 24. This is getting a little bit too crazy and Bess is starting to crack through. Yeah, I mean, I think Bess is just actually barely starting to do it. I don't think Sulky can actually stabilize from this point. This is what you were talking about earlier. Once you get on top of the rally points of the Zerg, it becomes a little bit precarious because you're kind of forced to trade right away and you're, you're getting most of your army killed as it's popping out of the hatcheries. You can't really morph lurkers there. There's just no real, like, hope of, like, defending against the Protoss player. And you have to wait for these big, long rally points from the other corner of the map to come up here. And you can't really synchronize the units coming in with the units hatching. Everything just kind of falls apart for the zerg at this point as we can see and the yes yeah, 69 supply to 150 is a lot of upgrades on these protoss units as well 213 even getting the shields upgrades to get a bit more meat onto these protoss archons so they're not too much paper then gg finally called from sulky and uh yeah a little bit of life here for terror uh, for protoss player with their one star remaining on their two-man squad okay best pulls off the bus there against sulky that position was looking so strong with so many lurkers, but he just rams it down. Best mm. sticking to his ape-like style. Uh, it's done him very, very well in the past in Protoss versus Terran, but you can see it still works against Zerg in certain situations. It kind of reminds me. I'm, I'm not that much of an, enough, enough of a nerd to remember the specifics, but it reminds me of like that clip from the movie where the Hulk sort of grabs. Is it Loki? He sort of like grabs Loki and just starts like smashing him around and says like puny god or whatever. It kind of is like that. Like you do, you expect like best not to be able to handle it, but he still just like throws you around and smashes you around like you're a rag doll, even though you're like, huh, I'm supposed to be like unbreakable. Like how are you killing me? That's right. I think that is the correct reference there. I think that was from like Avengers Endgame or something like that. Yeah, I think um, so. I mean, absolutely ragdolled there at the end. Um, there were some small mistakes from Soul Key, some uncharacteristic mistakes that were happening. Uh, but I thought his game plan was pretty good on that map, Minstrel. Now we're here on Radeon. So at least one map that uh, I like in this map pool, or at least one map that's you know, very standard and strong on uh, the AMD map here. Radeon's still going to be in this map pool, which I'm very excited about. Yeah, I mean, it's such a good map, and it, it, it gives you a totally unique flavor of the way you approach this game, especially with these very long rush distances. Some of the longest we've got in the game. Cross map Radeon is like the longest rush distance I think we, we have had in, ever in StarCraft. It's absolutely crazy. Um, it does kind of allow for a more methodical playstyle, but the third expansion is pretty challenging to take. It, it's it's relatively far away. It might it might look quite close because of how the base is positioned on the minimap, but trust me, that's a, a long walk for Terran to that third base. And Sharp being Sharp, we may be seeing um, some... Did he take that 11 gas? Was it 11 gas from Sharp? Because if that is, then maybe we might see a, a way of punishing uh, this bit of greed out of Vest here with this factory timing. I'm not sure if he's actually able to do that with the rush distances, though. I didn't see if it was an 11 gas, but I know that Sharp is partial to the very fast uh, factory openers. He's also partial to taking very quick three base uh, versus Protoss that open like this with the Nexus first. Uh, it requires a lot of precision though and to get Vultures out on the map with mines really early on because the best will have a later robotics facility because of the, um, the way he's opened here with the double gateway right. and uh, the very fast Nexus. You just won't have observers out too quickly and but Sharp can take advantage of that if he finds out about this Nexus and he will just now see it. I think he's going to be a little bit frustrated though with the position. Yeah. Another reason why the, the Levin Gas is just so strong against the Nexus first potentially, guys, is because it, it, they do the safe version where they make two gateways, one or two Zealots into uh, two Dragoons immediately. The Vulture actually gets there just before the two Goons are popping out. So you can you can start shooting probes at the natural and force them to stop mining uh, just before the Dragoons can save it. So at the very least, you might get one or two probes and you also deny a bit of mining time to compensate you for the earlier Gas and Vulture. So it's 
from what we're seeing from Sharpie. He wants to try and get in it just before these two goons pop out, but I'm not sure about the timing of that. The rush distance is on Radeon just a little bit longer than other maps. Ooh, trying to run by this two zealots. He will get past that. Coming in towards this natural. The probes will have to be pulled. One probe goes down. A second probe looks like it's about to fall. It does fall. And this vulture just going to make a run for it because he needs that for the follow-up. Uh, he needs that for the mines and the two zealots that are heading across the map as well. Uh, four marines are back at home. There should be another vulture popping out soon. Um, but... This is still a serious threat, especially with the SCV on the low ground here, trying to make the CC. He's going to leave yeah. one zealot to kill that uh, that SCV. And wait a second. Ooh. Pretty That's lucky. A Pretty lucky here. He is going to keep this uh, SCV alive, and he will just kill the, the zealot with only losing two marines total. This is a great opener for Sharp. Um, he will, however, lose the vulture over at best base. That's a little bit painful. So he won't be able yeah. to get any mines over there in front of best base before and or keep or force the 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 dragoons to stay back either so he's in kind of a difficult position here and i don't think he's going to be able to snag that third third base the quick third base i was talking about earlier yeah, it's always a tough nut to swallow uh, for Terran players when they can't get those mines out uh, with their vultures. I mean, a vulture is technically in a very OP unit, but there's a lot of resources investment that you need to to get those mines online. So if you do make some small uh, positioning mistakes and lose those vultures just before that mine upgrade becomes relevant, it's actually really painful to swallow that. It's so much map control that goes down the drain when you lose those three mines. And um, yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a painful uh, thing that all Terran players have to deal with so usually you'll see Terran players either go one or two ways they'll they'll become obsessed with how how they use their vultures and um or, or they'll you know become a lot more like tentative and more macro oriented and Sharp's one of those players that has become obsessed with his vultures and that's why he's so good at doing these early game shenanigans usually so he killed a couple of early probes he managed to forego any sort of bunker and he's gonna follow up with a drop uh, rather than trying to get into a quick three base here, he wants to diminish the economy that Best has set up so far. Uh, and we'll see if he can actually get in and do that. He's left a pathway for himself along the right-hand side of the map. You can see he's yep. got a mine over there, so uh, he'll know if there's Dragoons just sitting uh, and lying in wait in that position. He's trying to kill one of these Dragoons. He might actually get it here in the end, but he wasn't able to get the mines to connect. He doesn't lose any of the vultures. This is pretty good stuff from Sharp. He's going to move out now with the uh, dropship. Pick up uh, four vultures. Try to get them into the main. A lot of these are damaged already. But I think he's got at least like two or three uh, fresh ones to jump into that uh, dropship. Shuttle is coming out. Does this have a reaver already? I don't think so. But it could. Uh, actually... I actually think it does. Um, it's. I think it's slow enough that it does have the reaver in okay. it. I'm, I'm fairly. I'm fairly certain. I'm not 100. percent But um, he went for I, reaver I before observer, huh? Okay. Yeah, he did. I think he did. I think I saw the observatory finish. I think I saw the observatory start while the the support bay was already finished. I think that's what I saw. But uh, we see uh, the vultures coming into natural expansion just as the the reaver gets into the main base, and uh, that's actually quite a lot of potential damage on both sides. But I think that Besk has the opportunity, the damage potential to come out on top but it's really hard to get the execution down tank is also in position to already start fighting that back not all the shields have been shaved off this reaver just yet though so still a lot of potential uh, for best to be super annoying here tank is on just one hit uh, hit from death here but he can't get the scarab connection on that back scv because of the sim city of sharp so he at least will save that scv and not losing like the absolute maximum here um but with some bad target firing there's no way he's going to be able to get that tank at the very least so we'll be losing that reaver at the very end but it's hard to say who came out on top of this but i think overall like i think i favor shard's position quite favorably still i think that reaver had something like 12 kills near the end um, i can't confirm that i think i saw um like close to that number and then a few more kills went down but uh, pretty decent damage overall for best i'm not clear on how many probes were killed either at the natural uh, I thought that Sharp would actually drop a couple at the natural and more in the main and get a lot more damage there, but he kind of hovered around that natural and uh, was a little bit indecisive about how he wanted to do that. A lot of stuff was going on during that attack, though. You can't blame him. 
Uh, Sharp is going to try to come back in and polish off a few more probes here if he can make it happen. Maybe he can bring himself into an even better position. He's going to go for the main. Two Dragoons are prepared and that pylon goes down at the perfect time. He's going to lose the dropship as well. This went really bad for Sharp. Yeah, it was really great unit parving from Best to make sure he had the Dragoons in position to shut down the dropship on the exit as well. And uh, I think now it's starting to be a, a little bit more more best sided, but honestly, like Sharp did a great job of slowing down this third base. I think he was only started making this next like eight minutes thirty. It's a very slow third base from best. Um, I, but but now after losing that dropship, not really getting too much of a further damage done. I, I think now this is starting to look a little bit more wobbly for Sharp than it was a moment ago. I would. Um, I hope he can secure this third base without getting bowled over, but I'm, I, I'm imagining like in three or four minutes time, we're going to see a massive best just, just bowling him over and taking him out with a very strong timing. The positioning is going to have to be perfect here from Sharp. Nothing can be left undone here. He has to make sure that he's got uh, the tank spread exactly as he needs them he's got what what is this three wraiths no two wraiths okay um okay. that's interesting i like to see the wraith play uh if he goes with cloak and gets a third wraith then you can shut down the shuttles really quickly um right. and we might end up seeing that out of him but for now just two wraiths i mean it it hurts the shuttles but it really doesn't deal damage that quickly um and it costs a lot of gas as well so a uh, bit interesting to see that. This position here already getting a little bit weakened by Best just clear, clearing out the mines. Again, need perfect, perfect positioning here from Sharp to be able to hold on uh, from a slight, yeah. even a slight deficit. Even if you're actually ahead, it's tough to hold Best when he tries to crack you on three bases. But even it's just a tiny deficit makes it that much harder. Yeah, I agree. And I also want to see Sharp, now that he's finishing up this science facility, I want to see him go all the way up into at least seven factories before he even thinks about making a fourth command center. Like, you can't skimp on your factory count against someone like Best. Like, I think he needs to go into seven factory right now, that he's, now that he's built his tech. He needs to just saturate this third and get, go straight into seven factory. Absolutely. Getting into that high factory count to match this insane gateway count and arbiters are coming up for best too i saw that tech a little bit earlier but uh, i thought maybe my eyes were deceiving me best playing arbiters is that real uh it is real i guess but you don't usually see it he's so good at doing the sort of gateway man well it's more like king kong man as far as best is concerned like you know, the way he beats his chest while he does it is kind of a crazy thing to witness. He's one of the best in the business, pun intended, at doing it. And oh, gets the vulture in. Doesn't matter about the wall at all. And it's going to be a little bit annoying for Best uh, to have to worry about that. It's not going to be like anything too detrimental, but it does just you know, add a little thorn into his side to have to worry about while he's trying to get everything online and firing in all cylinders. Uh, any small victory is a big victory for Sharp because he does need to, to keep this grid under control. Sharp setting up a crazy defensive position there over by the natural, the, the separate, uh, that, that space between the natural and the third. Oh, oh, that's huge. Did you just see that? A probe being sent down here to the yep. bottom left gets picked off. It doesn't slow down the Nexus at all, but it does slow down, you know, adding on... Uh, extra defenses in that area. Maybe Sharp can slip in there again with some more uh, vultures. Get onto that high ground. Maybe catch some probes coming in the transfer. It doesn't seem like he's doing that right now. But there are two more vultures out here on the map. You can see he's always sharking around looking for kills. It is a very big deal. I mean, when you're sniping a probe like that, you're slowing down the expansion probably by at least 30 seconds, maybe as much as a minute or more. It's just such a valuable, cost-efficient move. And um, yeah, Whoa, Best was already relatively slow. <laughs> yeah, what is this tank doing? That must be a miss rally or something. There's no way he was intentionally sending that tank down there. That's kind of wild. It does get picked off by those dragoons in the center, unfortunately. Rafe sharking around at the natural third in the bottom left quadrant of the map uh, sorry vulture sorry trying to uh, get away from these units from being swallowed up if they can come in here to the bottom left and snipe off another probe that will be really huge it gets another probe not going up into the main base though I, I, the, yeah, he actually could have gone in there the <laughs> yeah why didn't he try uh he didn't uh <laughs> th he thought that best had that wall set up again but uh yeah in fact did not 
and those vultures could have been even more of a nuisance now here comes a recall oh this recall what two wraiths on top of this already how much can he actually do with that he's just gonna recall right in the natural this is so close to the army of sharp he should be able to clean this up with relative efficiency how many scvs will end up going down though in this trade uh, I imagine like at least half a dozen or so. But with the, the like you were saying just a moment ago, with these uh, tanks already in position to deal with this, not a lot. I, I, unironically, I think we'll not see more than like say six or seven SCV kills, and then the army will be trade off inefficiently. So this is probably one of the best case scenarios for Sharp, honestly. Like absolutely, Rolos has just like dried up so much utility and like shrunk their army right now that Sharp's going to be feeling way more comfortable in this game. Yeah, he could be thinking about taking a fourth right now um, with the, the removal of that Arbiter. He's catching some probes in the middle of the map as well. Oh, so many probes are making their way over here. If there was just a scan, ah, uh, Sharp doesn't have it. He does not have the scan to try and finish those off. He's going to loop around, try to go after the probes here on the left-hand side, but it looks like Bess is just in a close enough proximity to block that from happening. Sharp does not want to throw away all of his vultures here before he makes a move. Yeah, this is kind of a crazy game. And he, ooh, he's got a little minefield um, towards the back row of those tanks. That might come into play later on um, with, with when Best starts to get aggressive. You need to be careful not, not to leave these mines on top of his tanks like this. Best will just have a field day dragging those mines into his tanks. So he needs to eventually kill his own mines uh, in these uh, sieged up positions of, um, when he gets um, more entrenched. Uh, I hope he doesn't forget to do that because otherwise like, we could just see a big tempo swing where we, all the tanks blow up because he's just sitting on his own minds. In the words of the great Ozzy Dahaki, you cannot convince me that mines are not a Protoss unit. <laughs> They're a very strong unit indeed. Uh, yes, yeah, double-edged sword. Like one of the reasons why the game is balanced is because just because you've got something that's super OP doesn't mean like it, it, it doesn't always also work against you in some ways. Uh, you know that could be a radiate as well. Like you know, a radiated ultralisk can help kill the marines as well as damage the ultralisk. Like it kind of goes both ways with a lot of these OP abilities and in the game. And that's that's why the game is balanced and why you shouldn't be raging about um, what is fair and what isn't fair. In the comments down below because it honestly is uh, not really worth the argument no absolutely not you're just uh, wasting your breath this game is never going to change it is what it is and there are no balance patches forthcoming we've got this army moving out but just like you were talking about shun the mines are underneath the tanks and it's very worrisome indeed right yeah if he doesn't kill those i'm gonna be a little bit yeah, it's, it can it can spell disaster for Terran. Like, is it the chance that it never matters and we won't we won't see anything crazy as a result of that? But there's a chance that that could be the game ending thing where like you lose like a little patch of tanks to some mines and that's it. You just no longer can win the fight anymore. And uh, we see uh, Best trying to come to position. He is kind of thinking about it. I think he he's not he's, he's a wise gorilla though. He's got that like future armor like you know bowler hat on. He's not going to be just like going in at like you know any moment's notice. He's going to be trying to pick and choose the right timing and he realizes that's just too many mines too deep of a setup to go in right now he might instead um, play a bit more loosely and try and sneak in an arbiter for a uh, recall but he's gonna he status is the vessel and he's almost got the energy recharge to get the recall off so he could go for this 12 o'clock base and deny that or just come into the natural again i think he's gonna go for the natural um it's gonna be a little bit annoying and the base is almost mined out but uh, he could get a lot of damage done here the army's a little bit more out of position than last time yeah, he's going to get that recall in. It's mostly Zealots, so Vultures coming back from the front will be able to clean this relatively easily. Uh, I think this is going to go a little bit better than the first recall for best, but I don't think this is going to be game-ending damage. Sharp has been maxed for a little while. He's losing some of his supply now, but he can absolutely remax, and he should be able to hold his fourth. I was expecting maybe like a, a secondary attack coming into the fourth while that recall was going on as a distraction tactic, but that's yeah. not the case. Sharp, uh, Bess is just going to sit back while Sharp clears that, and now Sharp's going to come back out to the front. He's got a good supply, uh, you know, 192. He's got plenty of SCVs still left over, and he's got that fourth base up and operational. This is still looking pretty great for Sharp. I, I'm just, I'm kind of flabbergasted yeah. by Bess's decision to go for Arbiters because it, it doesn't seem like... Uh, he's as practiced with this play as he is with his regular... Uh, well, even if he... Yeah. 
even if he was well practiced with it, the, the, the reality is, is that even though Arbiter is a more well balanced unit, it has less potential value than playing Gateway Man. Like mm. Shuttles and Storm has higher potential than Arbiters. It's just a reality. Like there's only a limited amount of value you can squeeze out with Arbiters and uh, it doesn't have as much of a ceiling, so to speak. So yeah, and on top of that, he's not as good at executing it. He is going to recall down this 12 o'clock base, maybe can get the snipe on his command center. There's only vultures nearby, I think. I don't think there's anything to come in here and stop these dragoons maybe killing that command center which is a bit of conversation but there's not enough forces to fight against the terran at the front i don't think or yeah it's actually like just barely enough forces down here for sharp that he can keep this under control keep some pressure on the six o'clock base i think he might just barely save this command center as well so all things considered is looking pretty good for sharp pure dragoon recall not able to kill the command center sharp really quick at lifting that and pulling it away uh, as the Arbiter was coming in with the recall, and his force on the other side of the map is insane. He has so many tanks over here. A lot of this is stasis, but he's starting to spread out and pick off more bases. He just has to make sure to get the scan, and he's not scanning here. Finally, he gets the scan. He will be able to clear this, but this was a much better trade for best than it should have been uh, had the scan yeah. come through on time. And sometimes these stasises can actually work against you as Protoss if you create like a wall against your own zealots from even getting good surface area and coming in there on top of the, the Terran as well. Like you got to be careful with how you stasis and when. And uh, also keeping a, a mental uh, note of the timing of that so you can come in here and like uh, abuse the stasis timing just before it wears off and what have you. Um, but yeah, like all, thing, all things considered, looking pretty good for Sharp. It's trying to wrap around his best though. Get on this back line which is a little bit softer. He knows that like we are just talking about the stasis timing so he's going to try and get on top of that just before it wears off and try to abuse the position here uh, but meanwhile is taking a bit of a damage at this natural third in the bottom left quadrant of the map that nexus is under fire right now from some units of sharp and he's losing a few arbiters as well in the center so still getting some pretty good cost efficient trades with his army and now he can utilize these tanks back in his main force again but best is wisely cutting off the reinforcement line from sharp so he can then swap up this army later with a slightly more critical mass of units he has got another rally point to work in the bottom left corner so can really easily squash these units sharp is kind of in a bit of a, a, a dangerous spot here where he could just get completely annihilated Ooh, the storms are coming out that uh patented best army the arbiter there just a bit of a what would you call it like um mantle decoration or something yeah. you know hood ornament here to the front of this army uh completely unnecessary for him to break through that position but uh, now switching into this normal tech. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Observers are all going to fly whoa, whoa. in and almost all of them die. A uh, great stasis there on a couple of those Goliaths, some of the tanks as well. Bess is breaking through. This is crazy, dude. How did uh, Sharp wow. not set up this fourth base earlier? He's just transferring workers now, but Bess is already on top of it. Yeah, I think like Sharp overextended way too much in down into the southwest, and he utilized way too many units to knock out just one base, and now he's just been completely overrun by Best. I mean, I expected it a lot sooner, but we were seeing the same result from the Great Ape, and he's still just asserting that that simian dominance that is it, you kind of have to give it to him he's the best in the business at executing these kinds of uh, bust open plays 190 supplied to 100 right now sitting on top of these stasis tanks as well terran's mined out with his main naturals when you got one base worth of economy like really you need two bases mined of any chance in terran versus pearls in the mid to late game for stages gg finally called and yeah best might just get it done you know this lone wolf saying might just get it done that's crazy best running over sharp there if you go back and take a look at when the push was happening and the recall came through with what like five dragoons to, that shut down sharp's fourth base and prevented him from retaking that for so long the position was so good for sharp as he was coming across the map uh, had he been able to clean clear that up a little bit quicker get that fourth base back online and continue to rally keep the scans going and everything it's just so much to juggle all at the same time and best did a much better job of spinning those plates all credit to him he's carrying his race this week but can he do it against these next two zerg players queen or action who's going to come out next well best able to stretch sharp to the very limit of his play um and with that kind of crazy arbiter style uh, with the mix of uh, templar storm dropship he 
pretty much got everything aside from carriers that game and managed to make it work against one of our strongest TVP specialists. Uh, if best beats action here, what are the chances that Barracks can take him down? I, I think it's pretty low. Yeah, Barracks is not super hot in Tarrant versus Protoss. That's why I was like thinking just a moment ago, wow, this low wolf might actually do it because Barracks is going to be his probably easiest game going forward. He's just got to probably worry about action and queen here. I think he's, yeah, straight up, he will crush Barracks. Barracks is way more of a Terran versus Zerg specialist kind of player. He's more of like a, you know, 30, 40% win rate in Terran versus Protoss, and Bess is more of a Terran versus Protoss specialist. So, yeah, Bess probably just worrying about action and queen right now, and he can take all three of these guys. Set up for success. Can best make it happen? Action down here in the bottom left on Dominator. Our Gladiator remake. With the pizza slices heading out into the middle of the map. It's a three-player Gladiator, basically. Very poorly cut pizza, saying. Look at those. And like, like, what is that? And they like they spread the slices out to like make the pizza look bigger than it actually is. Like, What kind of marketing is this? The slices on the original Gladiator were much more symmetrical, but because of the, th the, the difficulties of making a three-player map, they weren't able to make it perfectly symmetrical. And Bess here trying to do another sneaky play with uh, Pylon finishing up. He's actually going to make a cannon now. So uh, not enough respect here from action, I guess. Yeah, um, he's supposed to pull three. You yeah. need three so you can hop two over. Right. Um, if you don't do that, then you can just actually commit to it. Even if your initial intention was to fake it, if they right. only pull two, you can just like, yeah, you, essentially like the, the, the Zerg player has disrespected the cannon rush. You need three. Well, you know what he's trying to do right now is he's just trying to block this probe from getting in. If he can stop the probe from building a second cannon, then it's very difficult to make the or to kill the actual hatchery. The one cannon is very slow at dealing that damage. And he will get the second and third cannon up. Oh, he can't make that. Oh, the little extra damage from the probe plus the two shots from the cannon kills that drone. And so he loses a drone and he has to make two sunken colonies. This is really, really rough for action. He's got some links coming out, though. Can he hold this? Uh, this is going to be a very tight hold. Uh, it's actually possible uh, with the sunken timing, I think, just barely. But he has to get a little bit lucky with the ah. Zerg ends. And he's just going to cancel. He knows there's enough investment from the Zerg that it doesn't matter. Once the sunken's are already on way, he can't cancel and get those drones back. It's just a nice little bait and switch. He, he turned a fake cannon rush into a double fake cannon rush. He's such a little handsome gorilla, isn't he? Now he's going to force these links to come in and see if they can do something in the natural expansion. As long as he can take any damage there, He's going to be feeling pretty comfortable about his position. So action is using that glitch where you can shoot uh, farther than the range of the hatchery. But he, oh, wow. That hatchery is getting very, very low. Uh, he switches over to just try to kill the pylon. Even has to bring some lings forward to make sure that that dies before this hatchery goes down. That was a little bit risky there from action sending the ling straight across the map rather than coming back yeah. to clean up the cannon but it it works out okay he's gonna build the layer in the natural to increase the hp uh, of his hatchery so when this layer yeah. finishes layer actually has more health than the uh, actual hatchery so right when this you finishes yeah you'll have a few extra uh, health granted to that hatch and makes it a little bit harder to snipe but it's still a big target here for best later on yeah, and your buildings have base armor as well, so you're just worried about it being sniped at like a 200 hit points, you know, you don't want it to be like too easy of a target. Um, it is a little bit risky if it does get sniped because then you've also lost your tech, so uh, he's going to have to hope that Bess doesn't do any kind of like seven gate goon builds or something, like five seven gate goon pushes and maybe come in here with dragoons early on and threaten, uh, <laughs> threaten that lair a little bit too much. But I don't think we'll see anything too crazy like that at our best. He'll just play a, a pretty standard game from here on and just be happy that he's hiccuped the, the macro powerhouse of action early game. And action is such a strong... Um, aggressive macro orientated zerg that uh, any kind of hiccups you can do against him is gonna be good but um but because he is so good i also wouldn't count him out but by any stretch of the word like we could see a very solid game out of action from here on oh action allowing these two zealots to sneak out is pretty bad um these actually might find the hatchery in the bottom right 
That would be super, super painful. Action actually spreading out his legs. I think he's figured out that two zealots left. And he doesn't know where they're at right now, but he's going to slowly loop around, try to figure out where those are uh, coming from, and he will find them. Okay, this is really important that he finds these zealots because two zealots walking uh, into your natural or up to your third base at a improper time can absolutely ruin your day as a zerg player and he cannot allow any more hiccups to happen in this game otherwise he'll just yeah. fall way too far behind and he's already got a, a sunken in the natural um to help deal right. with this cell coming in so now the zerglings don't have to worry too much or as much about coming out onto the map to commit to surrounding these zealots because uh, one zealot will just barely die uh, you need at least two to do a successful run by there so he's pretty pretty safe and has got this spire finished to you know produce one or two um, scourge to start catching these uh, corsairs. But because of the early shenanigans, he won't have like we were talking about before in the earlier game. Like he won't actually have the timing to kind of you know snipe the corsair right away. So the corsair will be safe and just you know flying around the map. But he will try and get the intercept the vector as it tries to retreat to the base. Now two scourge are making their way towards the rally point of the of best right now to see if they can come in and snipe this. Uh, Corsair, but they have such short uh, um, distances that he's actually just going into the main base to scout instead, it looks like. Two cannons. Yeah, two cannons in the main base. He's ready for you know, some sort of aggression from Action. He knows that the third base was heavily delayed, and so Action's economic position is not as hot as it usually would be. Um, Best has everything that he needs right now, and uh, has information about the follow-up for, here from Action. So I, I'm really liking Best's overall position. But we cannot count Action out. He's got a high ground natural as his third base. And that's one of the positions that Action is the scariest in, right? Is when he's got those yeah. uh, quick three bases with a free fourth base behind it. And can go right on into a late game hive play. Yeah, he's very strong at... Um doing those kinds of styles uh even in zerg versus terror he'll sometimes be super greedy and like make the bare minimal amount of mutalisks and go straight into crazy zerg or something like he'll do these very tactical greedy builds to try and get a macro edge over you and then um he's also such so strong at being a, an aggressive player that it, he's both good at building a lot of a lot of units and also leveraging those units against you with a pretty good control and uh, timed execution has got a pretty big flock of uh, scourge here trying to maybe get on top of the air superiority of best before it runs amok and can start to get some air dominance going uh, there is five corsairs there you need to be a little bit careful with like just just one or two corsairs going down could spell disaster for best so he's gonna be very wise to run back to retreat get back up to six um, corsairs utilize the cannons as point defense and uh, go from there because he knows that right now there's a little bit of an ogre's like potential where he can come in here and the uh, shark around and get some big damage onto the corsair fleet and uh, then best won't have as much control in this game as he needs well this is a pretty decent hold from action you know this early pressure with a bunch of zealots four gateways uh zealot running around with some corsairs being annoying um it can really crack open a player if they're just slightly behind they don't have just enough uh, scourge and mutas to deal with the air threat you start to lose overlords and then as the zealots run in you start to lose more and more but action just barely had the right number of scourge ready to fight this ready to push this back and he's forced best into a really defensive position while taking his fourth base uh yeah it's it's reasonable action definitely has a good shot in this game just needs to make sure not to lose all of these mutas and keep this threat alive so that best can't just move out unimpeded yeah um i mean so far i would say action is doing pretty good in this game like he wants the game to just drag out like yeah. as long as the game it maintains he's happy so it's kind of the, the onus is on best to make something happen here and he's going to be trying to take his third base but action's not too worried about that like he's going to go into fast four base anyway so he can just go into high but all oh, does get a pretty good surround on his courses but actually only like two of them falling there he had a big massive fleet of course does get another follow-up kill on those corsairs actually so now down to six so did manage to kill three in total which is actually a pretty sizable amount 
with all the gas being invested into these Corsairs. Best is hoping for air superiority right now, and Action is doing everything in his potential to try and deny that, so he can't just come in here and get a tactical advantage by utilizing a massive Corsair fleet and being annoying against Action. So, so far, everything is going pretty smooth for Action. He's dotted all his I's, crossed all his T's. He's going to be going to a very powerful full base economy. Let's just calculate this out, Shun. We've got, what, nine Corsairs that were made? Uh, yeah. Plus Archons as well. That's a heavy commitment into anti-air, and we've only built seven mutas here as action. So he has a lot of gas to work with. He's going to be able to make a ton of Hydras, and there's not going to be that ground-pounding force for best that we're used to seeing. He's mostly specialized here for anti-air. Uh, that's not going to go too well for him. He's actually going to kill his own evolution chamber here to get out of his base so that these Hydras can have a bit of unit flow as the Dragoons come up here. Hydras are going to make their way over towards the natural. Where is he going with this big counterattack for us? It looks like he's going directly for the throat of Best. He's just going to dive right on top of the cadence here. I don't see any Templar in this army. No Templar over at the third base of action either. This is just a pure Dragoon plus one Archon army. These uh, Mutas are actually being stabbed by the uh, Corsairs. So they're uh, going to all go down very, very quickly. But he actually kills the DT and keeps one Overlord alive. Now going to kill that last overlord but with the dt gone he can continue to push on the pressure he's punching through the natural he's killed all of this wall and he's starting to kill a lot of probes as well he's jumping on top of the dragoons dragoons are going down on mass so many hydras are making their way to the front i think that action's done it he has gg beautiful play wow. here by action and an over commitment to the anti-air defense for best no, action is coming, saying absolutely insane stuff. Barracks is a Terran versus Zerg specialist, though, so he he's going to be like you know like wiping his brow, Ooh, being yeah. like, "Phew, I actually get something I can win now. I can actually maybe take it." Yeah, definitely a better possibility here for Barracks. He's going to be happy about that last game result, but with action looking so solid in that last game. Will Barracks be able to come out on top? He's got a 70% win rate in a pro league right now versus Zerg. Uh, really right. impressive statistics, but statistics do not win games, do they, Shun? They don't, not on their own saying. They, they imply that you should be winning, but not necessarily whether or not you will. Potentially the last game of the night here and possibly one of the fastest KCM's uh, weeks that we've had this season with Protoss already going out due to having only two players. We were just discussing during the break how uh, it does suck that we can't have any sort of uh, revive here for the Protoss squad, but it does make sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I was just saying to you uh, off scripts, uh, saying that basically you can't do that. Like, if, otherwise you incentivize the potential for like, you know, deliberately not showing up so Snow can have two lives and then you hurt the integrity because you'll always have that like, you know, doubt in the back of your mind like did, did the guy not show up because he couldn't show up or did he not show up to like get an unfair advantage you know like it does hurt the integrity so you won't see anything like that any kind of compensation for only having the two-man squad here and uh monty hall though such a crazy map and we're not going to be seeing anything super crazy um out of barracks there is a lot of early game shenanigans you can do as a uh, pretty much any race on this map maybe not as much for zerg so uh, action might be a little bit relegated to having to be very creative if he wants to be sneaky but oh, um you'll just be uh, seeing them sliding an sev here to scout this isn't to um, do anything to no rush or anything this is just to get literally just get the sev down the lane to come and scout um, uh, he's actually choosing wrong though. Um, action is going to be expanding to the, the top lane rather than the center. Yeah, this is a wacky map, guys. This is the map most famous for uh, Bisu oh, versus. Ten. Oh, okay. It's 10 to 10. He's going to make a proxy factory at 10. All right, he's going to make a factory and I think float over, or will he try to utilize the, yes. the SCV no, to he'll hop? Float it. He'll probably float. Uh, he, I imagine he'll float it, but he could use the SCV to hop each time. It depends on how much he's practiced the execution. If, he, if he's practiced his execution specifically for this map and he's feeling confident, I imagine it might be the SCV hop method. It's just so crazy to risk it, but it looks like he's feeling confident and he'll go for that. Um, it's really crazy to risk it though because it can go wrong so so badly on this map. Like I've had, it, I've, I've when I played this back in the day, like there was times where I could drill it every single time, like ten times in a row, and then all of a sudden I couldn't do it three times in a row. And it's like what? Hmm. 
What is the second SCV coming over for? What do, we, what do we think about this this one? What is what is he doing with that? He's actually bringing it back. I, I'm really confused about what's actually yeah. going on right now. You see, well, is he planning to mine? Okay. Is he gonna build a, a starport? No, he's not mining gas. This is a oh, bit interesting. No this, this yeah, is a little bit weird right now from Barrett. Uh, yeah, I don't know about that actually. I'm really confused about that. This might just be to expand later? I have no idea. Like, it's really weird that it's just chilling there. I don't know. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, but he will be just, yeah, using the hopover method for these vultures. Uh, but there's, there's um, with the links here, there's a potential that you can slow this down um, by a little bit of time. Uh, if you, you want to slide the vulture over prematurely, the links will just surround it on the other side of the mineral. So it's a little bit of a mind mini game here. And you see, he can't get it over with just one one go. Like it's very frustrating to rely on this method um, to to do that. So he's going to be doing the float over now and utilize this this vulture on the other side of the little point defense. I see. Okay, so he has the vulture on this side to prevent anything from getting underneath the uh, factory to block it from landing yeah. and to also protect the vulture once it pops out. It's going to pop out. Can he make a run oh. for it? Ooh, he is going to get around this. That's huge. Wow. Barrack's going to get by this. He's going to start to kill a bunch of lings. He's just going to wait for another one to come up. Hydra den is done, though. Hydras are on the way. That should be the end of the, the actual aggression because we cannot get like speed or anything like that. Even just slow hydras can handle this this uh, attack. Although there are now three. He actually hopped it. Oh my God. He finally got the hop on it uh, at the perfect time here. Barracks. There's no range. So he can micro the hydras down is the problem. If there's not a critical mass of hydras, he actually can skirmish down these hydras in low numbers. It's just very difficult to do. But Barracks is a capable enough player that he can execute uh, this micro. If, if Action's very good at his targeting and maybe he can still hold on. He does get the vulture. He does get vulture though. So that's a really big pick for Action. Um, but it doesn't really matter. There's, the micro is good enough that he is starting to bully these hydras. And yeah, just one hatchery worth of production is not going to cut it. There's no way that he can easily get hydras from their second hatchery into his main base of defense either. So a lot of damage is going to be done to action right now, potentially. He is just barely squeezing out enough hydras to keep the vultures back for now. He's still mining. He mined out the patch. He mined out the patch. So now he can reinforce from the natural. Maybe he can hold on to this without losing too many drones. But now all the hydras are dead. He's going to start to go to work. He's just, look at this. The hydras are just barely popping out in time to hold this off and now the reinforcing from the natural will prevent any critical damage done here but i think still um barracks has done enough damage in this game that he's gonna make it very playable at least yeah maybe he can still play it out but this is definitely being shut down interesting going into a, a marine play he's just gonna all in marine after this this is gonna be a crazy game dude this is already kind of wild, wild, but this is going to be really, really nuts. Barracks, yeah. I mean, he's pulling no punches right now. He's going to go all in, and he's still getting damage in the main base, surprisingly. It, this is why I was talking to you about this map. It's, it's just, it, it creates such like crazy, interesting games, and like, don't we want that? Don't we want that as a spectator to watch those crazy, interesting games? I'm all about it, personally. Um, I would love to see these maps be utilized more, and uh, what a privilege it is to see this map in the, the KCM map pool. I've been talking about this map for a long time, and seeing it back is crazy to me uh this is one of the debut games for flash against bisu flash was in the top left bisu in the bottom right and he mined out the the gas the mineral wall by utilizing a gas to trade the mineral blocks into best being geyser units and then ran in with the marines to kill bisu and everyone called flash a cheesy so and so and the reality was that flash was a genius and no one knew just how good he was yet and uh, this was the map he did it on yeah, an absolutely legendary match but uh yeah, I agree. I think that this is very cool to have uh, in the map pool. I like the switch up from Africa TV, now called Soup, by the way. The Soup Star League um, coming up this next season. This is going to be one of the maps in the pool. I like that they're, you know, throwing in some kind of cr crazy maps, but then they're mostly focused on... Uh, wacky old maps like throwing in a wacky old map is pretty awesome um, just to right. mix things up rather than throwing in a completely wacky new map um throwing one of these into into the uh, field or into the the zeitgeist is, is pretty awesome now barracks is coming across the map with a whole bunch of marines two sunken colonies are on the way but i think he's going to make it here just before these finish we've got quite a few hydras to buy a little bit of time 
if this doesn't work, Barracks is dead, but I think it might just work. It's very, very close to uh, reaching this. Yeah, he's got the second Sunken just starting now. A few seconds and it will finish up. There is just enough Mewis to tank as well. So I actually think the window's completely evaporated. Um, right. Action's done a pretty good job of uh, weathering the storm that was uh, potentially. And he will be now to go to work on these, these bio units with these Muters. And he's going to be feeling pretty confident about his position. There's only one base Terran to really worry about. It's a lot more manageable for him to stay in a more low economy state when he's worrying about this. He'll only be able to produce one star put worth of vessels, and it will be a long time before those vessels are finished, so we can really go to work with these mutalisks right now. I thought that we were going to have a lot more uh, marines available for barracks, but yeah, you're right. There's hardly anything here, and uh, maybe that's part and parcel of you know doing this kind of crazy... Uh, factory across the map play but maybe also a factor being that he had one of his SUVs just never mining <laughs> inside yeah. the main base kind of crazy that barracks is gonna get pulled apart here uh, by just a standard mutilist play with skirt or with a uh, sunkins back at home to just defend the the bio ball uh, after such a crazy opening it's gonna end in a very normal natural way here yeah, I mean, honestly, like, there's a little bit of a hiccup with that SUV. Maybe he did put too much of a dent in his economy that he couldn't really, like, put on a strong showing here. He is still technically alive. He can put on the game. One base Terran is the strongest one base in the game. You can still pretty much do, like, you know, four barracks, one star port vessel production, just barely. It's, like, really skin of your teeth. You can just barely put out a pretty sizable army. But you do eventually need to expand, obviously. But for a while, you can, you know, kind of make it work with just one base as Terran, especially if the Zerg's on two, but as soon as the um, action's able to get up to the third base, and he's not, please don't kill your own barracks, barracks. I mean, maybe maybe he called himself barracks, so he remembers not to shoot his own barracks. <laughs> well, maybe he's just hating on himself right now, and he wants to shoot himself. <laughs> um, this is not going well, and I mean, he's just getting pulled apart. His factory goes down. Uh, that's annoying. It's not the uh, anything really fantastic right now, but I mean, he could have, like, flo floated that barracks into another corner of action space and tried to put on some more vulture pressure or something. He really needs something to help him out of this desperate position. The irradiate is what he's going for, but as long as action splits properly, and he is actually going to go after this. He has two Scourge. Yeah, he's going to kill this. Oh, wait a second. That did not go as planned. <laughs> yeah, I think he thought the Scourge was closer and that he had it, and he just, yeah, he, like, he made the input to run away with the, the Muters afterwards. Does get the, the follow-up connections with the Muters, though, so he still gets the job done, but a lot less efficiency there, and took a bit more of a bruising on those Muters on the exit so yes yeah, slight compensation for barracks going forward but honestly i really don't think so we have oh it does manage to almost catch one of these muters there is not a lot of muters made right now just like seven or so muters and one of them is heavily bruised two of them are kind of like you know two-thirds the way bruised so have been sobbing up enough but lurkos are on the way two sunkens are finished it's just barely enough bio to potentially break through this but the rhythm mutilus micro will make this a more zerg favored trade um but yeah terran on paper could win that fight but with the micro of the muters and the body block of those um, lurkers to deny surface area on those sunkers is just barely going to be enough to hold as these um, slurkers finish up. But he will kill quite a few of those um, mewers and sunkers to get something here. But the lurkers will just barely be in time. Oh, the spread and split is oh, spread. pretty good. But with that many lurkers plus the assistance of the mutas and lings popping out, he will not be able to break through. You can hear the disappointment in the voices of our Korean commentators. They are just as sad as you or I that we're not going to be able to see no. Barracks take this game down and we're not going to see a final game versus Queen. Action is just moments away from closing this out. Despite, you know, almost breaking through there, he just does not have the economy to take this into a late game. Uh, as long as Zerg holds on, even a just barely hold is completely fine. We just need to hold. That's it. Right.
Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's almost like um, the only way you could lose is if like something fell on like um, Action's house or something, like a you know like a bomb or like a, a plane or jet engine or something, or the internet gets cut. Like the, the only way something he, that, unless he obviously just throws the game by like you know sacrificing his whole army and does something crazy. Like on paper, there's absolutely no reason that Action should lose this game at all. Like it's 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 not even in the cards. I don't think. No, there's a couple of like wild things that maybe barracks could do, like build a drop ship right now and try to drop in the main or something. But even that, there's enough army here from action to hold the front and kill anything that could be dropped into the main. So there's really not yeah. much hope here. We're just kind of waiting for the tap out of barracks. Uh, there's even Scourge now and he's mining out the middle of the map so he can make a counterattack go across the map as well. Um, yeah, eventually action is going to take this one, guys. Not really too much else to say. Barracks just kind of holding on, trying to get an expansion right now. He's going to lose a, a, a science vessel out uh, as it's coming out um, towards the, the to, to reinforce here. And, and that, I mean, that's just insult to injury. We're trying to slowly beat our way through this huge lurker stack with just two vessels. There's yeah. like five lurkers being made right now. This is a losing he, battle. He's opening up the middle lane as well. So if he wants to, he could like lurker trick mm. over one or two lurkers into the main base and be annoying later on and try and sneak some lurkers into the main base by drilling them over. Yeah. It's also popular. Yeah, yeah he's going to move everything over towards the uh, center center uh, pathway. And he's going to take a base as well. He's going to get the third base online while attacking this direction. I don't think that Barracks is ready for this. He's mostly got his army on the right-hand side, and he doesn't have anything uh, in view of those mineral patches in the middle. A dropship coming out. It's going to drop into the middle uh, pathway. This might actually scout what Action's up to. Action sending drones right now to try and mine that yeah. out. Or just to, to try and hop things over. You can do it. Yeah, you yeah. can trick them over with... Um, just lurkers though right burrowing and not burrowing but he catches the lurkers he sees them he's gonna move towards his third the lurkers are not in position this is a nice little move by uh, barracks but even with just the lings coming forward he's gonna be able to clear this that's uh that's a little bit depressing yeah it's really rough um you can't really get anything done there's just so many lurkers up here that he can like, irradiate all day and he'll never break through up at the natural no matter how long he lay siege to it uh, now we're going to see the third gas finally come online, and there's not much he can do to stop that at the moment either. So he's going to try and go for it, though. He's going to try and break through. He does reposition the lurkers. He did have the fact that the lurkers are a little bit out of position going for him there, but action was you know very quick just to reshuffle the lurkers around and still just be kind of fine again. So no real craziness, but he does open up the position a tiny bit to maybe threaten um, another bus in a moment here. Maybe he can break through with an armor upgrade and taking three shots to kill from these lurkers. It is potential with a good enough split, maybe crazy enough positioning. He does want to try and get in and snipe this gas, but he's losing so many of those Marines to those subterranean spines for his efforts, and he's not going to be able to get in there into that pocket. Those lurkers are positioned in such a way that it's just too uh, costly to come in there to snipe that gas. Action's well aware of the Terran player wanting to snipe that. Yeah, he's well aware and he's just cutting off every different avenue of uh, comeback for uh, Barracks right now. He's got two Lurkers over here stacked up just to make sure that Barracks doesn't uh, mine through those patches and open up another pathway to attack him uh, at his third base. Defiler Mound is just about done and that should spell the end, although Barracks has shown a resilience that I didn't expect from him. Yeah, well, to be fair, Terran is the most resilient race, and uh, yeah, one two-base Terran can get a lot done, Terran versus Zerg, so there is a, still a potential for Action to hang himself here, make a blunder that Barracks can capitalize on. Barracks is a very capable Terran versus Zerg player. If he does smell weakness in any metric, he might be able to seize that and flip the script on Action, but on paper, it should be an Action victory, but there is still that potential that, you know, Action does something like a bit of a blunder here, or... Barracks can create an opportunity to play with some dropships or what have you later on. Uh, it's just going to be a very tall order for um, Barracks to make a win out of this. Absolutely. Uh, Barracks just going to keep getting value out of these vessels by irradiating the lurkers over and over. But 
That lurker number has swollen to a absolute massive spread. Um, with the fourth gas coming online as well, it's not going to get any better. The defilers are about to start hitting the field. Again, more irradiates coming down here, but action is completely fine weathering that storm, and he is 20, 30 supply ahead now. Yeah, and he's slowly like making lurkers to replace the lurkers that are getting irradiated. Like he's keeping on track with how many irradiates are available to barracks. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do we have any upgrades for the Marines yet? Because that's also become, going to become a huge factor. Uh, the lateness of the upgrades, whereas action is definitely keeping up on those. He's got plus one armor already. If it, that armor ever gets ahead of the Terran attack. Uh, with the Marines, it's devastating. Absolutely devastating. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, like, pretty much you have to be ahead to feel happy and even to not die. And as soon as those two things stop becoming a factor, you're probably uh, in a lot of trouble because, uh, yeah, your, your units kind of rely on being glass cannons. And if you take away the cannon element, they're just glass and absolutely shatter and get eviscerated by the Zerg. <laughs> Look at this. Action is starting to mine this out now. He's going to do a little counterattack while taking the base over on Barrack's side of the map and the base in the center left. He is not slowing down at all. He is making sure that he has a brilliant future in this game. He's actually doing the trick that you were talking about, what Flash did, um, yeah. by trading, trading minerals for gas uh, over and over again. You can eventually mine through this. That's exactly what Action is going to do. He's going to open up a pathway for Lurkers, Defilers, and Lings to make their way directly into the main. And Barracks is just not ready for this. He's all the way on the other side of the map, uh, throwing down uh, Irradiates, and Action is just going to bust through. Well, he even throws down like the preem the preemptive uh, dark swarm, even though he doesn't actually need it. It's like just showing like how like the potential of this attack is so devastating. Even if you did have some units there to try and shut this down, the dark swarm would just allow it to transpire nonetheless. Now going to be just littering some Chio dust in your main base. It's like when your friend passes you the controller, like you want to play, bro, and it's like just covered in Chio dust, there, and you don't want to get any of that nonsense on your hands. Uh, he's just uh, thrown that Cheeto dust right in his face. He's put it on his hand. He's just blown it right into his eyes. Barracks can't see anything anymore in his main base. And what he can see is just SCVs being destroyed. His main base just falling apart right now. Um, if we don't see a tap out, <laughs> I mean, Barracks is like trolling at this point, basically. He starts lifting off his buildings. It's like, mate, mutalisks. <laughs> Be crazy. Oh my gosh. Here goes his base over at the center right. That's the really the only last hope for Barracks. And GG is called GG. Action takes this one home. A bit of a anticlimactic week of KCM Shun. Um, but eventful nonetheless, right? <laughs> yeah, eventful. Yeah, definitely eventful. And we got to see the new maps. Yeah. We got a little glimpse there. Um, it's hard to compare to that last week, though. Season, uh, uh, week 6 was just oh. insane. Yeah, I think the script writers basically used up all their budget, and now we've got one of those episodes <laughs> where it's like, okay, we got to like lay off a little bit. We want to have dragons in the future episodes as well, guys. Like, you know, show it over here. <laughs> the CGI budget. Yeah, um, the CGI that... budget. Going with the question, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that's uh, the way she goes, though, boys. That is what it is. Like, you can't have absolute insane mayhem, uh, best of the year gameplay every single week of KCM. Sometimes we get a week like this where just a couple of games stand out and uh, for the most part things go about as you would expect. Best pulled out some great games, honestly. I think he's the, the highlight of this week, uh, the way that he was yeah. able to take out Soul Key. Um, he really, had a really pretty lack of performance recently, right? So right. it was nice to see him come out a little bit stronger and more his usual self this season. We haven't actually seen any good performances from Best really in any recent weeks. So finally seeing him back more like his usual self is a nice thing to see. Absolutely. He uh, did a, I mean, a great Arbiter play versus Sharp as well, right? Like it was looking yeah. a little weak uh, in the first couple of recalls, but. He really pulled it together there at the end. Made it into a great game.
Here's the point scores, guys. We've got Terran now uh, in the lead. Uh, or still in the lead here, but Zerg actually catching up. Protoss once again flatlining. Uh, it's looking less like a, a fully contested uh, finals like we were expecting from like week four and five. Things were looking a lot closer, but now it's getting pretty right. clear that it's a, a race to the top for Zerg and Terran. Oh, absolutely. I mean, Protoss cannot win anymore. Um, they will be having to go into the semifinals against either Terran or Zerg. And it's going to be... Uh, what? Who, wait a minute. If, if, if Zerg win next week and Terran comes second, they'll be joint on points. So how do they decide who will be in the semifinals at, at then? Is there like a, a semifinal semifinals, like a quarterfinals to to decide that? What happens if they're even points? You know what's hilarious, Shin? I have never seen this happen, but I've, it could I've, happen. I've talked about it like a million times. Guys who have been watching this for many, many seasons have heard me ramble about like, oh, the points, if this happens and that happens, then the points are going to be even. And what happens if it's, uh, you know, dead, if it's deadlocked on week eight? And it has never happened, so we've never figured it out. I'm not. I'm not even gonna <laughs> to jinx it by talking about it because okay. uh, then maybe finally it'll actually occur. Yeah, we won't talk about it next week. We'll just. Well, maybe that's we'll why. Maybe that's why we've maybe got some further craziness happening in KCM if we do see that point point system I and mean, they up lead nice and uh, even after all said and done next week. If Terran comes first and. Sorry, if Zerg comes first and Terran comes second, uh, yeah, we'll have to we'll have to see what happens next. We might see, you know, quarterfinals, just as playoff for who gets the 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 seed. Like, yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, only KCM uh, will be able to decide that. Um, either way, it'll be fun if that does occur. I'm just I'm not expecting it to happen. I've I've talked about it so many times. Like I said, and it just never happens. So cast just, curse. I want it to happen now. I want it to happen now, just so we can see what happens. Yeah, yeah. I've been waiting for it for a long time, but uh, just has not occurred. Anyways, guys, that's it for this week. Hope you guys enjoyed these matches. Make sure to go down to the link in the description. It's the first link. Go over to KCM's channel. Give them some love. Let them know that the English fans are watching and enjoying this season. Uh, week seven is done. Any last things to say there, Shun? I just want you guys to have an absolutely fantastic weekend and keep it real. All right. With that, we're out. See you next week, guys. Peace. Thanks, guys.